Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we are reading the book The Tanglewood Tea Shop by Lilac Mills. Chapter 1 Stevie didn't do black, he didn't shoot her. She was far more comfortable in white, Seth's white to be exact, but she could hardly have worn those to a funeral, could she? Although she suspected Great Aunt Peg would have seen the funny side if Stevie had worn them. Tears threatened, and she tried to push them away as Peg's last words drifted into her head. Don't be sad, my dear, Peggy had said. I'm ready to go. I've had a long life, and a good one. Life is for living and for dying. Stevie, you don't get one without the other. Shh, Stevie replied. You're not going to die. I won't let you. Her aunt had whizzed out a feeble laugh. You're not going to get any choice in it, my lovely. Now, don't mop and do me a favor. Stevie, with tears streaming down her face, said, Anything. You only get one chance at it, so leave it your way. Otherwise, I'll come back and haunt you. After that, Peg seemed to sink into herself and slowly faded away. How could I not be sad? Stevie wondered. For the twentieth time since that awful night, Peg had been like a grandmother to her, much more than her own had ever been. It was a pity her mother didn't see it the same way, though, she thought, stealing a glance out of the corner of her eye at a woman standing next to her. No one could accuse her mother of being sad, more like bored, if she were honest. Hazel regarded Peggy's funeral as a duty, nothing more. Something which had to be got through and then moved on from. For a moment, she quite disliked her mother, and right now, she wasn't too keen on her sister either. None of her relatives wanted to be here. Not that anyone ever actually wanted to be at a funeral, but those two, in particular, hadn't felt any real need to pay their respects. She suspected they were only doing so for the sake of appearances. After all, neither of them had bothered with Aunt Peg while she was alive, so why Stevie expected them to behave any different now the old lady was dead was beyond her. Karen leaned to her side, and Stevie gave her a watery smile. At least her friend had cared for Peg, as he hadn't even been related to the old lady. Karen whispered, It's a beautiful service. You've done your Aunt Peg proud. This time, a tear did fall. She had done her aunt proud, hadn't she? The nursing home where Peg had lived for the final six months of her life had recommended holding the service at the chapel next door to them. Stevie had wondered more than once if the care home had been built next to the chapel for the express purpose of providing the reverend with a steady stream of clients. But Stevie had chosen the little church near her aunt's old house the old building tended to get lost among the blocks of flats and offices, but she knew Peggy used to go there once in a while, and always at Christmas. Besides, there were still one or two people who remembered the old lady, and had wanted to attend her funeral without having to trek halfway across London to do so. All her mother had done was to cry about the cost of the funeral cars, which Stevie found hard to understand. They weren't exactly being charged by the mile, and Hazel wasn't paying for them out of her own pocket. Peg had left enough money to cover the cost of her funeral. Her mother was at least being consistent, Stevie conceded, because she had grizzled about the cost of everything, especially the flowers. Even now, Stevie swore her mother was giving the simple yet effective withering look. But Stevie had been adamant. Peggy had loved flowers and so she was determined not to skim. It was the only thing she could do for her aunt, except for scattering her asses, but she didn't want to think about that right now. Here, her mother thrust a hand into her hand, tried to stop sniffling. Stevie took it with a scowl, and Karen slipped her arm around Stevie's shoulders as the service drew to a close, and the final hymn was sung. Lord, but Stevie was going to miss the Carmagi only old lady dreadfully. What else was he going to do on a Saturday morning? 
Ever since Peck had been forced to live in the nursing home due to her increasingly poor health and frailty, Stevie had visited on Saturdays. She always took the old lady a treat or two and renewed her library book. She only had one out at a time because with her eyesight failing, Peg had been forced to rely on others to read to her and Stevie had always given her buds and flowers. At least I don't have her house to worry about, Stevie thought. It had been bad enough having to sort out the few possessions which Peg had taken with her to the nursing home. To be fair to the old woman, when Peg understood she could no longer care for herself, Stevie had offered to move in with her, but Peggy was adamant she didn't want Stevie nursing her. She had sorted out her own affairs with remarkable efficiency. It was one of the things Stevie had loved about Peggy, her independence. If the old woman could do it herself, then she did. I don't want to be a burden, was her favorite expression. And it used to exasperate Stevie to no end, as if Aunt Ben could ever be a burden. It was just a pity the rest of her family hadn't viewed Peg in the same way. Neither her mother nor her sister seemed to have any time for the old woman. Admittedly, her mother used to invite her around lots for at Christmas and Easter, but that was about it. Talk and gestures, nothing more. Since Peggy had moved to the nursing home, her mother had only visited once, and Fern hadn't visited at all, as far as Stevie was aware. In fact, her sister seemed to have completely forgotten the great aunt existed. There. It was over. Stevie had been dreading this day ever since the nursing manager had called to say Aunt Peg was sleeping away and if she wanted to say goodbye, she needed to get there quickly. And Stevie had been glad to have been there at the end, holding her aunt's hand and telling her she loved her as the old woman took her last breath. The only regret she had was that she hadn't been able to do more. What with working the unreasonable our chefs were expected to put in, and the restaurant being on the other side of London, it had been hard to get to see Peg more often than each Saturday. At least Peggy knew how much Stevie loved her, and she took comfort from that. Chapter 2 How much? It came out as a strangled yell as Stevie splattered tea down her chin. She dropped the cup back into its saucer with a loud clatter. Can't be serious. Her eyes widened in shock. Can you? The rather elderly gentleman, staring at her over his equally elderly desk, nodded once, his eyes twinkling. Was it because he was having her own, or because she enjoyed imparting good news? She desperately hoped it was the latter. Please let it be true. You're sure you've got the name right? Peggy Langtree? Steve asked. Another nod. But she didn't have any money, only enough to bury her. She used to keep her funeral funds, as she called them, in a vase on the window sill. Stevie smiled fondly. She clearly had more than you thought, the solicitor pointed out dryly. What about Mom and Fern? Don't tell me she left the same amount to them too? Stevie gulped at the thought. She must have been loaded. Mr. Guntley suffered forward in his chair and stippled in his hands together, elbows on his desk, a faint whiff of mothballs emanating from his direction. No, he said solemnly, after a dignified silence. Stevie waited for him to elaborate, but he made no move to speak again. After tapping her fingers on the desk and swinging her crossed leg, she asked, No, she didn't leave the same amount to mom and fair, or no, she wasn't loaded. The first option. She left differing amounts to your mother and your sister. Oh, I see, Stevie thought. Still in shock, but thankful Aunt Peg had left them something too. Whoever would have thought the old lady was worth so much. The solicitor cleared his throat, and the loose skin on his neck draped even further down over his knot tie. Just how old was she? He reminded Stevie of her tortoise it had as a child. The reptile's extendable neck had been an endless source of interest as it poked at his head each time the wizened creature had risked emerging from his cell, only for him to pull it in again with as much speed he could master. Her mother had told her that Ralph, a 
his TV had oddly called him, had run away. Crawled slowly was more like it, Stevie had thought at the time, but she got a picture. She didn't blame him. She'd have crawled away too, if she'd been in his shoes or cell. A semi-hysterical giggle bubbled to the surface. She pushed it back down, resisting the urge to poke Mr. Grantley on the nose to see what his head would do. She had visions of him retracting it down inside his shirt collar and popping it back out again. Aware her mind was wandering, it must be the shock, she wrenched her attention back to the ancient solicitor to find him patiently waiting, his chin still resting on the tips of his fingers, a faint smile on his face. She flushed, staring at him like a naughty schoolgirl facing the headmaster, a feeling she had once known very well indeed. The silence continued for a while, until she realized he was waiting for her to ask a question. Not any old question, THE question, Stevie asked it. How much did she leave Mom and Fern? The solicitor shook his head sadly. Not nearly as much as you, one thousand pounds each. Bloody hell! Stevie's hand flew to her mouth. Uh, sorry, she added, wondering how soon her family would demand their share of her not inconsiderable booty. She hadn't meant to swear. But he had said it's as if it would make things any better. Her mother and sister would go ballistic. She'd have to split her inheritance precisely three ways, else she'd never hear the end of it. Damn and blast. Not that she was greedy or anything, but in the current circumstances, she could do with the money. It's so much to take in, she said, trying to excuse her bad manners, no doubt. Mr. Cantley agreed calmly, picking up his glasses and wiggling the arms behind his large hairy ears. He flicked a page or two. Let me reiterate, in the interest of clarity, he said, Peggy Langtree left you 263,021 pounds and 57 pence, give or take, he added. Mrs. Taylor and Mrs. Chuck were both left 1,000 pounds. And if you try to give any of your inheritance to Mrs. Taylor or to Mrs. Chuck, then the cat's home gets it. The solicitor added, If you like today's story and you'd like to hear more, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for joining me.